Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we're going to talk about the right? So we are talking about uh, how to use a magnetic field, how to drive a magnetic field and stuff. And it usually looks like that. Here I tried to, to, to sketch a little bit a three-dimensional picture so that we can see this is a important. This is a model. It's a model of a magnetic circuit, not a real working magnetic circuit. And we have all things inside we need. We will, we will come to this. Okay, we will come to this and I will explain why the model looks like it looks. Yeah? So actually, we have here some iron parts. This is this, I don't know, E, G shaped part here. Yeah? And we have a coil sitting on this iron part, a coil. Something like that, yeah, yeah. coil here, yeah, sitting on the iron part. Here we have the side view, so here we would have the coil. There are some windings of this coil, end windings. Yeah. We have a current going into this coil. Yeah, here we have a current in and it must come out somewhere. So we have a current I in, must come out somewhere as well. That's that's our situation, all right? Why I have I drawn this like it would be staples? Because actually, this is how those things are built. Yeah, they are built with sheet metals. Yeah, they are sheet after sheet after sheet. This is no fool. This has a reason. Yeah, those sheets are also uh, electrically isolated to each other yeah? because we want to prevent so-called so eddy currents. Yeah, we don't know yet. I just want to show you how this really looks like. So they are usually uh, iron, iron, steel, sheet metals stapled. Yeah? This is how the, those things look. Yeah? And now I want to analyze this thing. Now I want to analyze this thing. Uh, yeah. So let's say we our current. Yeah? This is the winding in direction of our current. So our current is going here inside. Yeah? It's coming out here. Yeah? So this is the winding. So we have here, actually it's, of course, it's not only one big copper block. It's, uh, there are a lot of wires inside. I try to show this by making this checked. Uh, so there are a lot of wires inside here. Actually, like written here, we have N windings. Right. Now, I'm going to segment my circuit. Yeah? So I divide my circuit into reasonable parts. Hmm. I have here a part number one, okay, with a certain area A1 cross section. I have here part number two with a certain area A2. Okay. I have here part number 3 with a certain area A3. Yeah. I have here a certain area which is not covered. Yeah. So there's an air gap with an area A4. Yeah. And here I have a last area A5. Yeah. And if I want to, to draw a middle line of our of our flow, uh, flux, then I would say it would look like that. Mm. This is how our flux will pass through. So this is the middle length of our of our flux line. The average. That's it. Right. And this this has now the length L1 here, middle length L1, 
middle length L2, middle length L3, middle length L4, yeah, middle length L5, and then all those lengths together, they have the, f the full circle. Okay, we use the average, we use the average value, and we have here our magnetic flux. Yeah? So here we have a magnetic flux V. Yeah, and we want to to have a look at this without any stray stray fluxes. Yeah, so we say. Also, the flux which is going here will also go here, will also go here, will also go here. So, everywhere is the same magnetic flux. I'll write this here down. Phi is constant. Yeah. So, no influence of stray flux. This will simply not taken into account. Yeah? So the stray flux is not taken into account. Mm -hmm. Then what is our Durchflutung? Yeah? What is our theta here? Yeah? If we have a look at this area, yeah? here right-handed our theta equals n times i. So this is our this is our magnetomotive force. Because actually theta now is this theta to flutum equals and now we have the sum of All magnetic field strength multiplied by the length of this area. So in here we have a magnetic field strength on L2 yeah, multiplied with L H2 multiplied by L2 is here magnetic is here magnetic uh, uh, magnetomotive force used for this area. Here, L3 multiplied by H3 is magnetomotive force we use for this area. H4 multiplied by L4 is a magnetomotive force on this area, and this area, and this area, and so on. So I, I built the sum of all of all uh, magnetomotive forces, and this must be this to Fluton. Okay. And since phi is constant, yeah, we can say phi. Equals, yeah. then here we have a certain flux density in every area, it might be different. Yeah. So we have the flux density pi multiplied by ai, the area. So if we have here in, in area 2 a certain flux density p, p2, our phi is p2 multiplied by this cross section here. Okay, And since B equals mu multiplied by H, yeah, we end up that we say, okay, we have here mu i multiplied by H i multiplied by A i. This is B i here. Mm -hmm. So, our H i equals phi Divided by mu i a i. Hmm? This just resolved. Hmm? So this means if I put this now in here, our data is the sum, or actually phi is always the same, phi is always the same, so we have phi. And then we have the sum of all Li's divided by mu i Ai. 
If the sum of all allies is zero, you should find new allies. <laughs> no, just stupid word, word joke. Uh, so this, that's it. Huh? Or if I want to express it in another way, then we can say magnetomotive force or, or to flutum divided by phi equals the sum of Li mu i a i. This thing here, yeah, this thing here, you know, if <sighs> the magnetomotive force is some kind, uh, somehow, that the driving force, it's called magnetomotive force, the driving force, the driving force in electric was, was the voltage. So if we say here that's voltage and this phi is actually representing somehow the current, yeah, u divided by E, and this was according to Ohm's law, this was the resistance. So this is also some kind of resistance. And this is exactly what this is called. This is the magnetic resistance or sometimes called reluctance. Yeah. And this magnetic resistance equals L divided by mu dot A. Please consider, eh? remember what was what was uh, the electrical. Yeah? It was also L divided by A, but then we had some rho yeah? specific. So this is a material specific constant. This looks pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. What is the unit? Here we have, uh, well, the unit is amp by volt second yeah? and this is also 1 divided by h yeah? and this is called Henry it's me <laughs> Heinz, Heinz is the German version of Henry <laughs> no it's not named after me of course it's named after uh, historic history real smart man yeah uh, Magnetic resistance. And of course, there's also the magnetic conductance. Yeah. This is called A, and this is 1 divided by Rm. I'm using again the, the, the symbols which are usual here in, in Austria. Okay, And this is phi divided by theta and this is actually mu a divided by l and the unit of course is volt second by ampere and this is one henry hmm? magnetic conductance and of course of course it's the the way yeah? This is the way, <laughs> of course it's the way, that we have uh, we have the situation that this mu here inside the iron is very, very high usually. Yeah? So the magnetic uh, resistance, the re uh, reluctance is very low here in those areas. Here in the gap, yeah, we do have quite small mu yeah so rm will be will get very big here yeah so you can't come to the idea yes but isn't it good to drive a lot of uh magnetic through our material usually yeah usually you want to have strong magnetic fields and stuff yes would be good yeah however why is then this air gap inside who would build an air gap yeah if without air gap everything is fine well the thing is that most of our things where we need our magnetic field yeah, is for power coupling between moving parts, for instance, an electromotor. Yeah? Then we have a rotating part 
and then we have a fixed part and of course there's a gap between rotating and fixed part you can't go to zero of course you try to be as small as possible yeah and that's not possible yeah it's as small as possible but still there zero is not simply not possible okay and this is also the interesting part here usually the air gap yeah because actually i'm interested in the field of the air gap this is usually what makes my my machine go wild or not that wild yeah? the, the, and and those things here the iron they are simply there yeah this by the way is called yoke okay? yoke is this thing which is yoke no joke it's a yoke uh, this yoke is usually there that we can get the magnetic field from where it is produced to where it is used okay so somewhere we have coils inside then we have to guide the magnetic field to the air gap where it is used then and this is why our magnetic model model circuit looks like that huh? that's it we also mentioned here this henry yeah mm -hmm. this henry is not just for this magnetic conductance yeah there is also more yeah next time we're talking about these things here yeah? coils yeah the arrays this i can tell you is the counterpart of what was in the electric field was the capacitor is here this coil yeah? and we are storing here not uh, in the magnetic field but in the magnetic field so we don't have any capacity we have inductivity and this is also measured in Henry how you calculate this will be part of next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye